Good morning, everyone. We're so honored to be here with you. We're going to play a little bit of music and feel all our feelings. Thank you so much to everyone at Planned Parenthood for organizing this and for everyone's presence. And where you got to be at noon You are all the thing A reality I love years ago It quite nearly killed me In the long run It will make you cry Make you crazy and old before your time and the difference between me and you I won't argue right from wrong But I've had time to cry, my baby You don't have to cry I said cry, my baby You don't have to cry I said cry, my baby You don't have to cry I'd like to send this next one out to the Supreme Court. It's a song about people who are unreasonable. And it's called You Got Problems. Sometimes 
sometimes I try to solve them. Why are you keeping score? The game is played. If you could take this white flag, we'd call it a day. If you could take a breath, see that we could get straight. Oh, well, I keep reaching out and reaching out of you. Just keep on pushing me away. He had problems. Sometimes I try to solve them. He had problems. Sometimes I try to solve them. This next song is a song about hanging in there. It's called One More Day. Give me one more day, one more day, just when your faith is gone. Give me one more day.
Tell me, yeah. What did you say? Just when your faith is gone, give it one more day. Oh, just when your faith is gone, give it one more day. Oh, just when your faith is gone, give it one more day. This next song is a love song to Vermont. We wrote this song about, about the Bread and Puppet Theater, being inspired by them and um, all the work that they do in the world. It's about running away to the circus. And it's called Take Me With You. Tonight, tonight. 
Thank you. By the way, this is Bob Wagner on the guitar, Josh Weinstein on the bass. My name's Kat Wright. We live in the Burlington area. We've, these last, you know, six years, we've never been more proud to be from Vermont and part of this community and part of your world. And thank you so much for being who you are and for standing up always, always, always for what is right and what is fair. Um, this next song is a song about healing from trauma, which is definitely something that we all need after the last few years and what we're going through right now. And it's called Reminder in case you forget that you are made to heal as well and to transform and to take the best of your difficult times and leave the rest. to be a butterfly, baby. You gotta step into your cocoon and let yourself die. You gotta fold your hands and let it all turn to liquid. You gotta let go of all your fears if you want to fly. And anybody They can't hurt you anymore And if you need a reminder Just knock on my door Well, it's wild and metamorphosized, baby You gotta make peace with the past and leave your own to be born anew, nobody can do it for you. The only way to relief is to let yourself grieve the old you. The only way to transmute is to make yourself face the true blue. And anybody who hurt you, well, they can't hurt you anymore and if you need a reminder just knock on my door yeah the body keeps the score my love it all gets written on our core but also inside you, a map unfolds, and you were made for to walk this road. And you have all that you need to get home. And anybody who hurt you, they can hurt you. If you need a reminder, just knock on my door. And if you need a reminder, just knock on my Thanks. We'll send this one out to the Supreme Court as well. It's called You Let Me Down. Say you love 
was strong, but you were wrong. You let me down. You let me down. Said you would stay, but you ran away. You let me down. You let me down. You let me down. the same you let me down you let me down I played along and then you were gone you let me down you let me down you let me down you let me down told me up and baby you let me down you let
me Tell me that the world's at peace Help me find a sweet release Lover, won't you comfort me Lover, won't you comfort me I can't do it alone, no I can't do it alone I can't do it alone on my own I can't do it alone, no I can't do it alone I can't do it alone on my own No, no I can't do it alone, no I can't do it alone I can't do it alone on my own No, no Love, won't you comfort me that the world's at peace lover won't you comfort lover won't you comfort lover won't you comfort me They've got us all linked and traced Everybody's on the run No one looks me in the face We turned into a big machine We kill everything in our way When someone has a hard time we don't even know what to say We're all just in various phases of falling apart Falling apart We're all just in various phases of falling apart And it's hard if you need me, then I'll agree, I'll agree to be there for you. If you need me, then I'll agree, I'll agree to be there for you. The truth does 
doesn't see the light of day. We turned into a big disease, exploded with factories. We ruined everything we've dreamed, but still people don't believe. We were all just in various phases of falling. Falling apart. We were all just in various phases of falling apart. And it's hard. If you need me, then I'll agree. I'll agree to be there for you. If you need me, then I'll agree. Be there for you. Oh, oh, I'm on my way. Oh, oh, I'm on my way. Thank you so much for having us again. We're so honored to be here with you all today. It's actually difficult to look at your signs and your your beauty and your strength while I'm singing because I will start crying because this is so insane that this is real life and that we have to have these signs. But thank you for being here and let's keep fighting. And thank you for your presence.
Thanks so much. We love you, Vermont. We love you, people of Vermont. We love you, values of Vermont. Thank you so much for everything that you do. everyone. Woo! Yeah, that's the energy that I'm looking for. It doesn't matter if it's hot, but we have ice cream, so that takes care of that. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Cat Wright Trio, for that amazing performance, you guys. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Vidhi Salla. I'm the host of an international radio show called Vidhi's Bollywood Jukebox. And uh, I'm very happy to be the MC for today's rally. So, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I want to cover some logistics before we start. There are some restrooms available there for, every, uh, for everyone to use. And uh, for everybody's safety, we recommend you wear a mask during the rally, especially when you're huddled close together. A big thank you to our organizations who have tables here. Please make sure to visit them. They have a lot of important information to share that is important for Vermonters. Please drink water and stay hydrated. It's really hot today, and we want you to be comfortable and safe. There are bottles of water at the Planned Parenthood and ACLU tables. Those tents are right at the beginning there. So please, please help yourself. Before we kick off the program, we have uh, content warnings for themes, including abortion and sexual assault. Some of these conversations can be difficult for people, so please do whatever is necessary to take care of yourself. Throughout today's program, if you need assistance, please visit the Planned Parenthood table. And I would like to give a big thank you to our co-hosts for today's rally. They are Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund. Woo! ACLU of Vermont. Vermont League of Women's Voters. Alliance for a Better Vermont. Rights and Democracy. Vermont Public Interest Research Group. Vermont Conservation Voters. And finally, the Vermont NEA. We are going to kick off this rally 
by inviting on stage none other than Senator Bernie Sanders. Please give it up for him. Woo! Keep it coming, keep it coming. Thank you, and thank you all very much for being here. <laughs> Today we are proud to be Vermonters because we know that our small state is prepared to lead this country And no matter what happens around America, we are very clear. It is women who have the right to control their bodies, not politicians. Now, all of you know that just a few days ago in the Senate, we lost a vote to pass the Women's Health Protection Act. My view is that we're going to bring that bill up again and again and again. And if we need to end the filibuster in order to pass that bill, we will pass that bill. You know, I got to say that in Washington there is, as all of you know, no end to the lies and the hypocrisy. But on this issue, I think my right-wing colleagues have outdone themselves. How often have we heard right-wing senators and members of the House say, get government off our backs. Oh, we don't want to wear a mask. Don't force us to wear a mask. We don't want to get a vaccine. Don't force us to get a vaccine. But somehow these very same people think it is appropriate to tell every woman in this country what she can do with their bodies. So we say to our right-wing colleagues, end this outrageous hypocrisy. If you believe in human freedom, you know what? Freedom extends to women in this country as well. The hypocrisy that is involved is that the loudest voices in this country who want to deny a woman the right to choose, who think they have the right to force women to have babies when they don't want to, these are exactly the same people who will never lift a finger to help women, families, and children in this country. Part of the American Rescue Plan, we took a major step forward to cut childhood poverty by expanding and extending the children's tax credit. It took 41, lowered childhood poverty by 41 percent. We could not get one Republican vote to extend that program. 
we can't get any Republican support to deal with the crisis in childcare and make that affordable. We can't get one Republican vote to do what every other major country on earth does and have paid family and medical leave. So these right-wing ideologues who think they have the right to tell every woman, woman in this country what she could do with their body, they are prepared to say to these very same women, you got to go back to work a week after you give birth. How outrageous is that? Look, this struggle against patriarchy is not a new struggle. Women have been treated as second or third class Americans since the inception of this country. Women did not have the right to vote until the 1920s. Women needed a, listen to this, I didn't know this until recently, women needed a co-signer for a bank loan up until 1974. Until the 1980s, if some guy, husband, or boyfriend were beating, beating up his spouse, it was considered a domestic issue. Police should not be involved. And throughout history, and even today, women are struggling to get the jobs that they want. So this struggle has gone on for a very, very long time. But what we are saying today, loudly and clearly, is we are not going back, we are going forward. <laughs> Roe v. Wade was passed 50 years ago, recognizing the constitutional right of every woman in this country to control her own body. We are not going backward. So brothers and sisters, I don't have to tell you that we are in the midst of a major, major political struggle in this country on many, many fronts. But I am confident that in this state, and I want to say something now to the men who are here today, and we thank you all for coming out. Because in my very strong view, and I know people say this is a women's issue, I don't think so. I think this is a human rights issue. And if there was ever a time in American history where the men had to stand with the women, this is that moment. So let us go forward together with our brothers and sisters all over this country, with the vast majority of the American people. And make it clear, we will not accept the overturning of Roe v. Wade we will not accept women becoming second or third class citizens. We're going to defeat this in every way we can. Thank you all very much. with some energy and uh, I would like to now do the land acknowledgement because uh, we were time bound so we obviously had to invite Senator Sanders but um, this land acknowledgement has been written by Maddie Nelson 
who is a rising senior at the University of Vermont. Yeah. Maddie is the first Maddie is the first indigenous woman student body president for 11,000 plus students. Maddie couldn't be here today, but she provided a beautiful land acknowledgement, which I will read now. Vermont is located on the waters and lands which have long served as a site of meeting and exchange among indigenous peoples for thousands of years and is home to the Western Abenaki people. Vermont should seek to honor, recognize, and respect these places, these peoples, especially the Abenaki. They are the traditional stewards of the waters and lands and continue to be in this present day. In that resolution today, we will begin by acknowledging that the state of Vermont is a guest on this land and that many of the individuals in our Vermont community are guests as well. <laughs> Indigenous peoples and cultures are still present on this land and within our community. The state's role as a guest is to respect the waters and lands that are within our use to acknowledge and incorporate the indigenous knowledge that is interwoven into this land and work with local indigenous communities to learn what can be further done. While the land acknowledgement is an essential starting point, there is much work ahead as we come to terms with the legacies and trauma of indigenous dispossession. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maddie. I would now like to introduce Kel Arbor. Kel, Kel is the director of the Health and Wellness Program at Pride Center of Vermont. Please help me welcome Kel. Thank you so much. Ahoy! My name is Kel Arbor. That's Kelly without a Y, because I don't wonder why. My pronouns are warrior and they, and I am the director of health and wellness at the Pride Center. Thank you, Taylor Small, for the tiara. I'm here today to call in intersectionality. With each identity that we hold, ability, race, gender, nationality, sexuality, etc., the more stigmatized the identity is, the higher chance of sickness and poor health. You might not see me as someone needing vaginal care. I am a person assigned female at birth. I roll with a vulva. As a genderqueer kid, I told myself, hang on, someday you'll get that hysterectomy. But doctor knows best, and my youthful fertility was not to be tampered with. I did finally get that hysterectomy, but only because I, ye I lived for years with cysts. A few years after I had my womb renovated, we found out I was dying with an AIDS diagnosis. The lack of providers understanding the intersections of my gender and sexuality did not help us detect HIV soon enough. I receive better health care from my providers now, but it's still subpar to what I need. Non-binary and trans folks like me, people of color and people with disabilities, we are extra in need of sexual health and reproductive liberty. We are left intentionally out of the conversation as if we do not exist. I know I am a unicorn alien, but I am real. 
What we need is people-centered care. It is my body and my choice for all choices. Listen, y'all, I want to hear you say that. I want you to raise your voice. When I say my body, I want you to scream my choice. We're going to do it three times. My body. My choice. My body. My choice. My body. My body. My choice. Now is the time to take the lead of people with lived experience. Harm reduction reminds us that everyone is a unique individual. Ask what our needs are in a respectful and dignified way uplift and center leaders with the most marginalized lived experience. For example, people of color, trans and non-binary people, and people with disabilities. Be our accomplices out there and disrupt the harm that you're seeing. Our relationships are power. Start with the closest people you care about and call in, lean in, to learning, discomfort, and action. The Reproductive Liberty Amendment directly impacts our work in Vermont to uplift LGBTQ plus people out of stigma and sickness and into liberation. This impacts all of our lives. Reproductive liberty affects us all. It's not just a woman's issue. This is about vasectomies. This is about all of our bodies. This amendment would be a good move for Vermont, and we lead the nation in good. But good is mediocre. Great is what we need, and I see that greatness potential in Vermont. Let us not stop until black and brown women, fens, and trans people can live in liberation. Let us celebrate these small changes and keep stepping into freedom. Let us bring the visibility of love and togetherness into the streets. Let us be the change we want to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Kel. And now I would like to bring on stage, I would like to invite on stage, Hannah Brislin. Hannah is the Northern Vermont organizer with Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund. Take it away, Hannah. Hey, y'all. All right, I'm at Guy Wang here. It's time to get cathartic. We're gonna continue with the chanting. We're all angry. This anger is just, let's get it out of our systems. Let's express it. Let's do it together. Let's be collective about it. All right, so the chant is, when bigots attack, we fight back. 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 All right, thank you all. I organize in Addison County, Shitton County, Franklin County, and Grand Isle. Hit me up if you want to get involved. Thank you all for being here. Excellent. Thank you, Hannah. It is my pleasure to now introduce on stage Dr. Harry Chen. Dr. Chen was the Commissioner of Health in Vermont and is now the Treasurer of the Vermont for Reproductive Liberty campaign. Help me welcome Dr. Harry Chen. All right, Whoa. good afternoon everybody. It's really great to be with all of you today and thank you so much for showing up in support for reproductive rights. I'd first like to thank our entire congressional delegation. I call them small but mighty. We heard from Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Patrick Leahy, and Congressman Peter Welch, who actually happens to be sitting on the steps back there. Uh, 
I want to thank them for their support of reproductive rights here in Vermont and at the national level. I'd also like to thank Governor Phil Scott for his support of Reproductive Liberty Amendment in Vermont. And of course, I'm so grateful to our Vermont legislators who passed the Reproductive Liberty Amendment twice so that it will now be on the ballot in November. <laughs> Congressman Welch has always been a champion for us in Congress, and I know he will fight to get legislation passed to codify Roe. He never wavers on these critical issues, and we are lucky to have him in Congress. <laughs> Congressman Welch is co-sponsoring a resolution opposing criminalization of essential health care. I mean, really, I never thought I'd hear that or think about that. The resolution expresses the opposition of the House of Representatives to the criminalization of essential health care, including sexual, the full range of sexual reproductive health care, such as abortion, gender-affirming care, and contraceptive care, and disapproving of the criminalization of pregnancy outcomes. This resolution makes it clear that no person should be arrested, indicted, or prosecuted for the outcome of their own pregnancy, and that people deserve access to health care without fear or punishment. Thank you, Congressman Welch. Now, the recent leak of the draft decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade forecasts a major shift in almost 50 years of reproductive health care in America. This is outrageous, and it's really for us and for me and everyone here called to action. The Reproductive Liberty Amendment is the proposed amendment to the Vermont Constitution that guarantees the right to personal reproductive liberty for all Vermonters. Now is not the time for complacency. Vermont must lead the way and pass it in November. Its passage ensures access to the full spectrum of reproductive health care and Vermonters' rights to make their own decision in terms of becoming pregnant, to use temporary or permanent birth control, or to seek abortion care. It would be easy to characterize the Reproductive Liberty Amendment as political or a moral issue but at its core, it's about the public's health. <laughs> Reproductive health care is intensely private, personal, and should be firmly a matter between providers and, most importantly, patients. <laughs> I saw this firsthand as an emergency physician spending most of my career here in Vermont, unfettered access to quality reproductive health care is essential to a healthy population. The potential action by the Supreme Court overturning Roe will have profound effects on health, the health of Americans. And while abortions will still be legal here in Vermont, we need stronger protections provided by the RLA. America already has the highest rate of maternal mortality among developed countries, double the rate of most high-income countries. And the rate, sadly, is increasing. The rate of increase is even greater for women of color or who live in poverty. Research suggests that banning abortion could increase maternal deaths by more than 20%. Every year, 60,000 women suffer consequences from labor and delivery. This, too, will likely increase with the overturning of Roe. 26 states are poised to restrict access to abortion for over 36 million people if Roe is overturned by the court. Removing access to safe and legal abortion will set the U.S. back even further regarding maternal health 
and worsen existing health disparities. Women and girls will be injured. Some will likely die from illegal, unsafe abortions. This will take us back to a dark time in reproductive health in America. Restricting access to safe, restricting access to safe and legal abortions can have profound effects. People who are denied abortions have poorer health outcomes, including mental health and economic hardships, including poor credit, debt, and bankruptcies. People are denied, who are denied abortions have to carry an unwanted pregnancy to term experience lasting impacts on their health, well-being, and finances. There are also negative effects noted in their children, including greater rates of poverty and delayed developmental milestones. These are outcomes we never want to see in Vermont. The Vermont legislature has worked hard over the past four years, laying the groundwork for the RLA. Now it's time for Vermont voters, all of you out there, to step up and pass the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. This passing the amendment will enshrine reproductive autonomy and self-control uh, in our Constitution. Let us get it done and send a strong message that Vermont believes in and will protect reproductive rights for all. We can't do this alone. If you're able to donate anything, you can to Reproductive Liberty Amendment campaign, please do so. There are posters all over the grounds here with a QR code that will enable you to do donate directly to the campaign. Five, ten, twenty dollars will go a long way in reaching our goal to protect reproductive rights in Vermont for the long term. So thank you so, so much for being here and for your vote, especially in November. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Maroni Minter. Born and raised in Gabon, Maroni moved to Vermont in 2004. Maroni now works at Ben & Jerry's. Please help me welcome Maroni. Hello everybody, my name is Maroney, I'm the uh, U.S. Activist Manager with Ben and & Jerry's. And before I start, let me just say, if you haven't got your free ice cream yet, the truck is back there, so please stop by and get your free ice cream. Now, I am here today because like so many of you, we at Ben & Jerry's believe and stand for rights of individuals to make reproductive health care decisions for themselves. <laughs> Liberty is central to our freedom and dignity, and everyone should have the right to determine their own life course. And when it comes, when it comes to the most important decisions in life, such as whether to become a parent, every person should have the right to determine their own life course, regardless of their race, gender, religion, income, or zip code. Now, while abortion has been legal for le nearly five decades, many communities have never experienced true access to abortion care because of policies rooted uh, root in systemic racism. Black, indigenous, and people of color do not have access to health care from abortion to prenatal care, to preventive care, because of the systemic racism and structural inequality. Yeah. Our concerns are often ignored or not taken seriously. We have the highest rate of maternal and infant death, and we are more likely to be investigated, prosecuted, and punished for pregnancy outcomes. I am speaking 
not just as an advocate, but as a man and a brother of six sisters. This is personal to me. As mentioned already, I come from Gabon, where it is extremely difficult to get safe abortion care. One of my cousins died during abortion on her own. I almost lost two of my sisters because they did not have access to safe abortion. In 2019, the second oldest of my sisters was pregnant. And afraid of how the family would react, she decided to have an abortion. Not having a clinic or a safe place under medical professionals, she bought pills on the street and almost died. And it was luck that I happened to be there and had some money, took my sisters to the hospital to save her life. Now, I want to warn you that the worst part of this story contains sexual violence. Almost three years ago now, my sister finally told me how she got pregnant and why she did not want to keep the baby. She was raped by a family member. If my sisters had access to safe abortions, they would not have put their own lives at risk. And I truly believe that if my cousin had access to safe abortion, she would still be alive today. Now, no one, I mean, no one should lose their lives or their loved one because they lack access to safe abortion. Great. Now, I want to thank all legislators and leaders here today because while the Supreme Court leaks makes the deepest fear clear to so many, this year Vermont has an opportunity to protect abortion rights and become the first state to preserve reproductive liberty in our Constitution. If passed by voters in November, the Reproductive Liberty Amendment would guarantee all people who live in Vermont the right to become pregnant and carry a pregnancy to term, to choose or refuse sterilization, to choose abortion, and to choose or refuse contraception. The constitutional amendment allows people who live in Vermont an opportunity to preserve these liberties. I urge you to vote yes on the Reproductive Liberty Amendment this November and tell your community member to get out and do so. Now, let us be clear. The Supreme Court's decision will not only impact women. It will impact LGBTQ community which is why we at Ben & Jerry's are promoting support for the trans community in key states where regressive policies are being considered or have passed. We are pulling billboards in states like Texas, Georgia, Virginia, Florida, and so on. The message on these billboards share our disagreement with these policies being passed. We have partnered with the National Center for Transgender Equality to share our support of people who identify as trans in our country. And to let people know that brands have a support, brands have a place to support communities that we serve. The billboards are placed within one mile radius to the Capitol building in each state to make sure that our message to make sure that our message is seen clear and heard loud. Now, the truth is, no matter how the Supreme Court decides on this case, ultimately, we at Ben and & Jerry's and our allies across the country will never stop fighting for the right of individuals to make reproductive health care decisions for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Get out in November. Make sure you vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. That was excellent. Thank you, Maroni. I would now like to call upon stage Sade Bolger. Said is the Central Vermont organizer with Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund. Go for it, Said. Yes, 
Hey folks, how about this cloud? Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna lead a little chant. I just wanna say one thing before that. Um, I'm transgender, so I'm gonna speak to my community here right now. If you're here, I love you, I see you, I stand by you, and I will absolutely die on this hill to protect your rights. I'm right here protecting my uterus as well as all of yours. So thank you. Thank you for showing up for women today, for trans people, for non-binary people. I love you and we see you here. We are fighting for you. All right, so I'm gonna say, what do we want? Gender justice. When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Gender justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Gender, Gender justice. justice. When do we want it? Now. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I'm, and I'm the volunteer organizer for Central Vermont in the Northeast Kingdom. So if you want to get involved and have some fun, let me know. Yeah, that was great, Sade. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming. I would like to take this moment to let you all know how you can help pass the Reproductive Liberty Amendment in Vermont. The amendment will protect our reproductive rights here long term by enshrining these protections in our state constitution. Let's get it done and send a strong message that Vermont believes in protective, reproductive rights for all. So if you are able to donate anything that you can to the Reproductive Liberty Amendment campaign, there are posters here on the lawn with a QR code that will enable you to donate directly to the campaign. Five, ten, twenty dollars will go a long way in reaching our goal to protect reproductive rights in Vermont for a long term. So thank you so much for your support. Now, I would like to introduce Reverend Joan Javier Duval. Reverend Joan is a Unitarian Universalist minister and a strong supporter of reproductive rights. Please give a warm welcome to Reverend Joan. Hey everyone, it is so good to be here with you. I am feeling the power of this crowd, of these speakers. Are you feeling it? I am here this afternoon because my religious faith affirms that our lives and our bodies are sacred. Consent and bodily autonomy are foundational to human dignity and self-determination. And our reproductive freedom is a necessary part of the wellness and flourishing that we all desire and that we all deserve. Over the past few months, I have heard from friends and loved ones living in Vermont and elsewhere who have experienced the broad array of joys and sorrows that go along with reproductive choices and realities. For one same-sex couple, it's the good news of a long-awaited baby born with the support of fertility treatments. For another couple, it's the difficult decision to abort a fetus after prenatal testing revealed an adverse health prognosis. And earlier this year, just one week before the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, I myself experienced the sadness for a second time of miscarrying early in my pregnancy and navigating my healthcare options in the aftermath of that loss. In this crowd, I am sure there are thousands of stories like these, like mine. Each day, people in all corners of our state and our country face questions and decisions about their reproductive health. And each and every one of us ought to be able to use our own sacred conscience and agency to make the decisions that are right for each of us and our families 
including the decision to seek an abortion when that is necessary. Every woman, every person, should have the right to make decisions about their bodies and access health care according to your own beliefs and values. Every woman, every person should have the right to choose whether or not to have children, to raise one's children in safe and healthy environments, and to be free from oppression or shame in living out one's sexuality. And we know that it is unjust and it is harmful when our right to exercise our agency and our conscience is curtailed. It is unjust and it is harmful when access is limited to the kind of care that we need to live lives of wholeness and flourishing. And the people that are, who are hurt most by these restrictions are those who are already hurting from economic disparities and social inequity poor people, disabled people, queer and trans people, and people of color. No matter your age, your gender, your religion, your race, your sexuality, or how much money you have in your bank account, we all have the right to make important decisions about our lives, our futures, and our bodies, and to have access to the care that we need and desire. So with these rights under attack, Vermont's Reproductive Liberty Amendment is critically important to upholding our freedom and dignity. We have the opportunity to channel our fear, our hurt, our anger, and our power. And I want to say especially to religious leaders and any people in faith communities that now is the time to show up with the best of our liberatory theology and our values for reproductive justice and freedom. Let us all use our voice and our vote to make it clear to elected officials and to court justices that our reproductive choices now and in the future are up to each of us. So please make sure that you are registered to vote and take a moment today to pledge to vote yes on Prop 5. Do whatever you can to turn out your friends, your family, and your neighbors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Joan. Now I would like to introduce Maya Aga. Maya is representing Southern Vermont on behalf of the Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund. Take it away, Maya. Yeah, Maya! Hey, y'all. So first of all, let's start with the chant. Our body, our choice. Our body, our choice. Our body, our choice. Okay, one more. Abor abortion is health care. Abortion is health care. Abortion is health care. And can everyone give a chant, a shout out, if you are from Southern Vermont? Woo! We would love to have you all sign up to volunteer in the back. Uh, it is a black tent, and we would love to have you get involved. Thanks so much. Thank you, Maya. It is now my pleasure to introduce Katerina Campbell. Katerina is a feminist, queer woman of color, indigenous person, and a survivor. Katerina has served on the boards of Planned Parenthood of Northern New England and ACLU of Vermont. Please give a warm welcome to Katerina. so grateful that we're together. 
My name is Katerina, and I am the child of a brave 15-year-old girl named Edna Cristina Moraes Cabral, an indigenous Brazilian who was falsely adopted and sold to a wealthy family where she was used as an indentured servant. At age 11, my birth mother ran away, deciding that homelessness was better than continuous abuse. She became pregnant with my half-sister at 13, and again at 15 with me. At the time, she was living with both of us under a bridge and working as a domestica, or house cleaner. Though very clever, her choices for survival were limited as she never learned to read or write. I am the product of an emergency C-section that almost killed her. My mother was forced to carry two pregnancies to term under the age of 16. I wish she could have focused instead on getting herself out of poverty. I value my mother's life and my life simultaneously and recognize her well-being, reproductive sovereignty, and right to care as bound with my own. My support of her and of our collective right to reproductive autonomy does not signal a lack of regard for my own life, but a cherishing of her life and a recognition that her life is just as sacred as my own. Unfortunately, I cannot undo my mother's suffering, nor reinstate her right to choice. What I can do is support our communities here and now, and honor the right to reproductive freedom for all who can become pregnant, which includes people of many genders. For example, I am non-binary and I can become pregnant. As an indigenous person and member of the disability community, the Reproductive Liberty Amendment also makes me feel protected from the past horrors of forced sterilization. Passing the Reproductive Liberty Amendment would assure me that unlike my birth mother, if I do choose to have a child, I can be confident that it will be my choice and at a time when I am well resourced and ready to parent in this world. That choice heals generational trauma and is one that we all deserve. So much love to each of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Katerina. That was really good. Uh, now I would like to introduce Kia Morris, who is the Executive Director at Rights and Democracy. Please help me welcome Kia. gonna take a selfie because you know what? Yes. This is some important Woo! shit right here. Yeah. Yeah. Hands up everybody! Hands up our bodies! Thank you, thank you. We're gonna, we're gonna make it through. I'm so glad to be able to be here with you all today. I wanna thank each of our speakers before who have been folks that have shown up and shown out every single day. You all are here today because we are standing in solidarity, right? Yeah. This work has been long coming. This work has been necessary. This has been a, a slog that's actually taken entirely too long when you think about the fundamental pieces of why we have to fight. We have a historical precedence in this nation of ignoring the needs and outrightly coming through to actually limit our body autonomy for the purposes of profit, power, and greed. Boo. Historical precedence here today. We can look at the kidnap, the forced marriage and rape of indigenous women at the founding of this nation. Pocahontas is not a triumphant story. It was determined by those in power that indigenous people needed to be wiped off the planet and that indigenous women's bodies 
men's bodies, two-spirited bodies, needed to not only be regulated, but owned, managed, and controlled. We have a historical precedent of chattel slavery. This country was literally built on using black women's bodies, black men's bodies, to create a population of slaves, to build these buildings, to create these roads, to feed our economy. Black women have been fighting for their rights to have bodily autonomy ever since we were snatched off the shores. Right. And it is, it, is, it is real to acknowledge that these black women's bodies are used in the same ways that we would of cattle, the same ways that we were spoken of as commodities. This heifer's good for raising. This stud will do great. We're going to create a race of blacks to continue to have the physical fortitude to deal with the terrors of slavery. This is the historical precedence that is on our precipice right now. And if you are not okay with that, I wanna hear you say, that ain't right. We know that there is forced sterilization that is a part of this country's history. Forced sterilization, regardless of gender, used both as a tool of terrorism and of very specific bodily autonomy control. That of black, indigenous, Latinx, anyone who was deemed to be non-white, the disability community, I know of a disabled man, an individual with disabilities who had cerebral palsy and was stuck in an institution in Mississippi. And because he was a black man with cerebral palsy, he was castrated. That ain't right. I know of a black woman elder who in her 70s still cries about the fact that she woke up after giving birth to her child to find out that they had stolen her fertility without her consent. That ain't right. It was not even seven years ago that I met a woman at a playground who was there at the same time I was there with my child and told a very chilling, similar story where it was determined by some doctors that it was in her best interest to take away her reproductive rights without her consent mid-surgical procedure. And this right. woman in her 20s wept. Our current practices are still happening and our Supreme Court justices are justifying it. The words that Alito came up with are absolutely rooted in systemic racism, in patriarchy, and a complete abandonment of gender justice. Abortion rights are something that's directly affected not only my family, but myself. I learned not that long ago that one of my great-grandmothers died following an abortion because she could not see herself having a sixth child in an abusive marriage. She died to try to seek her freedom from that terror. Myself, not even 19 in my freshman year of college, coming out the other side of a very emotionally abusive relationship, found out that I was pregnant. And after having already been sexually assaulted and told very clearly that my body was not of my own, I had to make that difficult decision for my life and my rights. And today, I'm the proud mother of a beautiful boy. And it was the right timing, it was the right space, and I could not be more honored to have that role, but there's so many who can't, so let's not pretend like that's the only reason why we're here today. I wanna honor Dr. Chen, if he's still around, he might be hiding in the shade. He might have left already. 
I want to honor Planned Parenthood because when I served in this legislature, we had to fight to pass a bill to give contraception for all. Yes, that's right. It was Planned Parenthood at the fight to ensure that everyone would have access to free contraception, including vasectomies. And that was a fight. That was a fight that we didn't know we were going to need. We said there's no way the ACA is going to be overturned, but just in case, let's codify it. So that's what we're here to do today. We're here to make sure that our, this proposition goes through. It can't just be a thought. It has to become a reality because we have zero historical precedents to, uh, to sit on and to relax, to believe that these rights are somehow protected because it depends on who is defining our humanity at that moment in time. So we must determine our destiny. Yeah. Rights and democracy is here for this fight. We are you. You are us and we are all in this together because what is happening right now? What did I just say? Yeah. Thank you. That was really powerful. Thank you so much, Kaya. Yeah. Woo. Before I proceed, I have an important announcement to make. We found this phone that belongs to somebody. Luckily, it has their cards, so I'm just going to read out the name that's on the card. It's, uh, uh, sorry, uh, pardon my pronunciation, Thorolf Van Walsum. If this phone belongs to you, Please come and get it from the tent right here. The cover has interesting graffiti of Kyle from South Park and uh, Interstellar and uh, Austin Powers. <laughs> so, so yeah, please come and get your phone and uh, the rest of your stuff from here. The next uh, speaker I would like to introduce is Indy Schoenherr. Indy is representing the ACLU of Vermont, an organization that is such an important partner in passing the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Let's give a warm welcome to Indy. Wow, this is wild. Oh my gosh, hello. I'm Indy Schoenherr. I'm the Advocacy Fellow at the ACLU of Vermont. Thank you all so much for being here and showing your support for reproductive freedom. Um, I'm here, yes! <laughs> reproductive liberty is essential to fulfill the promise of equality and self-determination rooted in our nation and our state's founding documents and principles. Reproductive autonomy means opportunity, the opportunity to obtain an education, to work, to love, to build a family, to make a life, and ultimately, the opportunity to live the life as one desires. We are living in unprecedented times as we are witnessing at both a state and federal level the whittling away of reproductive liberties we have held for decades. Recognizing this growing threat, the ACLU and partners like Planned Parenthood began to mobilize in 2016 to do everything we can to protect reproductive liberty in Vermont. Our efforts have prepared us for this moment. Maybe some of y'all can relate to this. As a Gen Z millennial individual, I grew up feeling a sense of security because of Roe v. Wade. And simultaneously, I felt the undercurrent of threats against my reproductive autonomy due to the stories I heard from across this country. However, I did not ever envision the Supreme Court going so far to potentially overturn Roe. I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> And with immense gratitude and hope and a whole lot of anger as well. Yeah. I'm just here to share with you all that we have a path forward, and that is through the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Uh, 
Um, our state constitution, if amended, would read that an individual's right to personal reproductive autonomy is central to the liberty and dignity to determine one's life course and shall not be denied or infringed unless justified by a compelling state interest achieved by the least restrictive means. Mm -hmm. This amendment would protect the right to become pregnant, carry a pregnancy to term, and choose or refuse contraception, sterilization, and abortion care. <laughs> the Reproductive Liberty Amendment protects reproductive rights that already exist in Vermont, and this is giving us the best opportunity to ensure that the rights we have and rely on today won't change tomorrow. I want to share a bit of my story and how I came into this work uh, and what the Reproductive Liberty Amendment means to me. Just seven months ago, I joined the ACLU of Vermont as the Advocacy Fellow. <laughs> and in the past seven months, I've had the opportunity to work on various campaigns and it has been both challenging and empowering but I literally could not believe that I would be joining a strong coalition to advance Proposition 5 through the legislature. <laughs> and this coalition's effort began over four years ago, and the proposal worked its way through the long and complex process of becoming a constitutional amendment here in Vermont. And as introduced, Prop 5 would give people the opportunity to amend the Vermont Constitution to guarantee the right to personal reproductive liberty for all. In January, I testified in support of Prop 5, the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. And I witnessed and celebrated with my colleagues and friends the historic moment when it passed the House this was one of the top five moments of my life. <laughs> and with the final passage of Proposal 5 by the House of Representatives, we've been able to shift our focus to building grassroots support for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, which will be on the ballot this year. And now, we're urging you to vote yes on this Reproductive Liberty yeah. Amendment. As a black non-binary person, and I can only speak for myself, the RLA symbolizes an acknowledgement of my humanity because it aims to uphold and protect my life course. In the past two years, I came into a greater awareness of my gender identity, which caused a lot of things to shift for me. And I started to have questions about what I wanted for my life and what I wanted my future to look like. Here's a glimpse of what I envisioned for myself a quiet life with my cats and my chosen family. Yeah. I took into account my own generational trauma and mental health struggles, and I decided that this cycle of trauma ends with me. I do not want children. I do not want to experience pregnancy. And no, I will not change my mind. For me, the Reproductive Liberty uh, Amendment restores a sense of security again, knowing that what I've decided for my future will be protected from political whims. When we talk about reproductive health, we must not leave out the voices of trans, non-binary, genderqueer, and gender non-conforming people. Mm -hmm. Having control over our reproductive decisions can affirm someone's gender identity, and not having that control can do the exact opposite. Yeah. With a significant impact, reproductive decisions, like whether to carry a pregnancy, can have on our bodies and how we see our identities reflected at us. It's critical that individuals make those decisions for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And the core of this amendment is that we should all, no matter our identities, have our reproductive freedom protected, and the government should not create or perpetuate systems of inequity. And that vision hasn't been a reality for LGBTQ people, as well as people with disabilities, BIPOC, and many others. And this amendment is a step forward to shifting that landscape. <laughs> There should be no question where Vermont stands with regard to its core values and commitment to fundamental rights. 
we must respond to the mounting threat to reproductive liberty by enshrining reprodu reproductive autonomy as a constitutional and fundamental right in our state's constitution. Yeah. And this right, it deserves the highest level of protection. For these reasons, I will be voting yes in November to enshrine reproductive liberty in our state constitution, and I urge you all to join me. And beyond voting yes, we need you to connect with friends and community members and educate them about how important this vote is. We cannot afford to be complacent. Vermont has the opportunity to show the nation what it means to be a leader in an and excuse me, to be a leader in affirming reproductive liberty. But to do so, we must turn out and vote yes on the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Indy. That was great. We have one more speaker left for today, but thank you all for your energy, for all your signs, for being here. Yeah. Great going. And uh, before I invite the next speaker, some acknowledgments are in order. I would like to thank our sound engineer, Ron Sweet of Ron Sweet Music. Where are you, Ron? There you are. Thank you, Ron. Ron donated his time and talents to our rally today, and we couldn't have done this event without you. Thank you, Ron. Sweet. Patrick Quinby, who is assisting him, who's helping Ron on the sound. Thank you, Patrick. I would also like to thank our American Sign Language interpreters, Sierra Magnum, and Nora Kennedy. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra and Nora. We have a special announcement to make for Mosaic Vermont. Following this rally, join Mosaic and other anti-violence and advocacy organizations in VT to a call in a culture of consent today on the VCFA College Green happening now until 5 p.m. This gathering of activists will engage community members in workshops, discussion groups, and activities around ending gender and sexual violence in our communities. Yeah. The event closes at 5 p.m. with a youth-led solidarity march and survivor speak out from the VCFA College Green to here at the State House where survival vigil speak out takes place. Let's change the narrative. End violence, period. And now it's time for our final speaker, Paige Fisher. Paige is the Vermont Public Affairs Organizing Manager with Planned Parenthood, and she worked night and day to make this rally happen today. Please give a special welcome to Paige. Thank you for staying here, folks. Let's talk about taking action. Are you guys ready to take action? Yeah. Are you ready to take action? so many stories and different experiences. We know this is important. We know we want to pass the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, but it can't be done without Vermonters. Yeah. Are you ready to take action? Yeah. All right, let's do it. I have some important actions that I need every person to think about taking. Number one, if you haven't pledged to vote on one of our lists, I need you to put your name down. You need to say, I am ready to vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment this November. Yeah. Second thing, I don't want the words and knowledge that you learned today to stay at this event. I want you to talk to your neighbors. 
I want you to talk to your family members. I want you to talk to your church mates. I want you to talk to your gym buddies. I want you to talk to the people in your grocery line when you go to check out. Yeah. I need every single one of you saying, hey, what's happening on a national level is bullshit, but we have the answer right here in Vermont. Are you ready to vote this November? Every single person. And lastly, you've heard it all today, but I can't emphasize it again. It's really important that you donate. It is expensive to run a statewide campaign and to pass a, a constitutional amendment. So even if you have like a dollar in your pocket, there's a big orange bin on the, or, on the back table and the information. Just drop it in there. Every dollar counts. Every dollar counts. And last but not least, my team of organizers are all around the state doing incredible work with incredible volunteers. Please give a warm and thankful applause for all of our volunteers who do incredible work every single day. But we need an army. We need you. And we need volunteers all across the state. So if you're looking for something to do, if you came all the way to Montpelier because this is important to you, then I need you to be out there talking about the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, getting more petition signatures, and make sure that we pass this with flying colors. Are you with me? Are you with me? If you're as pissed as I am, I need you with me. All right, you can sign up to volunteer on those petition pages too. And please talk to our organizers. They'll be all throughout the, the lawn there. And, uh, and then in other news, uh, League of Women Voters is here taking voter registrations. If you're not registered to vote, please get signed up. Please do that, they're down there. And then, I don't know if this person uh, collected this, but there's a wallet down at the info booth. If you are missing a wallet, go check it out. Yeah. All right, last piece. Let's take action right now. You guys ready to take action right now? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So we want to know why you came today. You heard a lot of stories and experiences here at the mic today, but why are you here today? Why aren't you at the farmer's market or down at the river? Why are you here right now? Everybody pull out your phones. Take a selfie or go to our Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund or Repro Liberty VT Facebook page. There's a graphic that asks you, why are you here today? Share it and share why you're here today. And it has a hashtag on it. And that way we can see how well we did on this action. There are 2,400 people here today. We made history, yeah. folks. Yeah. And so, show that you are here today by posting on social media. That's a great way to amplify the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Take action. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.